Hey, what's up, everybody? Josh Bowerly here with the Entrepreneur's Playbook, where we help seven and eight figure businesses ignite their financial superpowers. Here as always with Ron. Yeah, Parisi. Doing great, Josh. Ron, how are you doing this really, week? Really, yeah. I thought we would do awesome. uh, something interesting, and this is just we'll walk through a scenario which you're well familiar with about what CPA and Fire can do for entrepreneurs, and you know, you being the client, and I'll represent CPA and Fire, and we'll do a recap of uh, the last year working together. What that looked like? Yeah, and I, I think this is a good one because we, we do get a lot of questions with, with people that talk to us at this level. They want to know exactly what relationship like this looks like and, and what it can do for them. So well, th this isn't a real client. None of these facts are real, but it's very similar to the exact yeah. people that we work with. I'm not a yeah. trained actor. I assume you're not either. Just roll with our skills here. But yeah, I think yeah, I mean, we've, done, you know, we've done conversations with clients before. Like we talked about, it. it's very sensitive data, right? This is why I, I, I thought that exactly. running through one where we don't have to use anybody's real financial information would be the best just to, and then just to give a touch and feel for what we do for everybody. I'll yep. tee it up. So yep. we have been working together for maybe just a little over a year, right? It was pretty good uh, kickoff within the first month. You came to us, your financials were, I would say your QuickBooks were a little below par. I was a little disappointed you being a CPA, but now I'm joking around. When clients come to us, usually the QuickBooks are a mess, right? It's not, and I don't want to get too far into account speak, but the chart of accounts, right, is that they're just haphazardly and it really just doesn't give the data quickly in a digestible manner. You were doing well, right? You were almost a, at a million dollar revenue point. You were profitable, but you really, you, you thought you had a lot more in the tank, a lot more runway. And that's why you came to us, right? You were, you were ready to grow and potentially with that hockey stick growth. Within the first 30 days, we sat down and we built out a three-year plan, right? You wanted to get to 5 million in three years with your coaching business. And, mm -hmm. and we obviously looked at revenue first and looked at different revenue streams on how you were going to go from a million to five mm -hmm. and what it was going to take to get there. And then we reverse engineered you. We looked at team, the marketing strategy, any assets, relationships, things that we're going to you were going to need to make serious investments in and we worked that three-year plan backwards and then over the last year we we've used the rolling 12-month budget to keep you on track so how in your words how, how did things go yeah so i'll give you the background on my situation as you said i'm a coach i work with coach real estate investors counting wise i i was using a a bookkeeper that a bunch of people in my mastermind had recommended she just does, does bookkeeping I, I assumed everything was fine i was getting in a, a profit and loss statement every month and, and a balance sheet every month and that's about all i knew i knew i was supposed to get those i didn't really understand them but i knew i was getting them i had a tax guy again just recommendations from my group he prepared my taxes at the end of every year give me a few things here and there that that i could maybe do throughout the year had me get an s corporation which seemed like it was helpful but otherwise yeah not much interaction throughout the year and I knew that I was missing things. I thought my business was doing very well. It was just a little, like you said, a little under a million on gross revenue. And I had no idea what, after all my expenses, that was. I felt like it was probably good. As you said, as we dove in, I was a little shocked to, to know just how low that was, how much money was going out the door. And we sat down, and like you said, we wrote out those goals and we had very specific goals over the next five years, one, two, three, four, and five. And that alone was just huge, just getting that financial clarity on what my goals were starting with where I was currently at, just something I had no idea of before. Like you said, you dove into my QuickBooks. I discovered that while she, my bookkeeper was coding the transactions and technically doing everything she was supposed to, it, it wasn't clean. They, 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 they just didn't give me a sense of what I was truly doing. So you guys just going in there and cleaning up that chart of accounts and giving me a clear picture of not only what that says, but how I can read it and what numbers I should be looking at and, and yeah. being able to interpret uh, was huge. And then just setting those clear goals and, and not only setting goals and just setting a vague like, oh, I want to be at 2 million by year two, but okay, you want to be at 2 million. This is what that means. You're currently spending $200,000 on advertising, which is yielding you $800,000. What are you going to need to spend to get to 200 or $2 million? And really diving into this is where you want to be. This is what that means. This is where you need to cut. This is where you need to add. And just getting that financial clarity, I thought was yeah, awesome. Helpful. Yeah, I think. There are a couple of surprises, right? That you thought you were more profitable than you were. You were using the balance in the checkbook as, as your guide. And there were some surprises that we caught that coming down the pipe and just, again, you don't know what you don't know and profitability is king and you gotta, you gotta watch not, not leave any money on the table. But what I thought was cool too, is this the first time we showed you our dashboard 
maybe just talk a little about that, you know, what maybe compare and contrast what you were getting from a P&L and a balance sheet compared to what we were looking at from the dashboard every month. Yeah, that was the, one, of the, one of the biggest things that before I had this P&L and all I knew to look at was that, that bottom line net income number. And it, that, that was basically every, the only the extent of which I, that my financials provided. I didn't even understand what a balance sheet was, to be honest with you. And then I come with you guys and not only are the, the, the financials in better shape, but then we have this dashboard that's showing me my KPIs, whatever my key performance indicators are. It's showing me all these different ratios that you and I had discussed on these are what's important to your business. If these look good, then your business is doing good. Don't necessarily pay attention to just that net income number. This is what we're going to look at because this is going to drive it. As, as you always say, it's forward looking, not rear view looking. Net income is a rear view. That's what you did. But what are you going to do? And that's what I think those key PIs provide us is this is what your future is going to look based on. Yeah, what those I think are. one is we looked at how many subscribers, how many coaching clients you had. What, what your renewal rate was, how many people weren't paying you. I just had no clue. And that some of your team maybe was given some discounts that you were unaware of. And just, again, looking at lifetime value of your client. So we were able to see, okay, if somebody came in and what was the percentage of renewal, right? What kind of upsells could you do? So I thought really that I, I was impressed with the team with what they were able to show you. And then too, going forward, maximizing your profitability. We really looked, we dug into yeah, I think you were doing a lot of stuff, particularly on the software that you didn't need to do. You were unaware of what was going out the door. And then talk a little too about, like you said, we were doing kind of a Forex on the marketing spend. What were you able to glean from the information that we gave you on the marketing spend and your return on it? Yeah, I think number one, what you talked about with what we could be doing with our current clients, that was just so huge for me because that's all we hear in business, right? Do more advertising, target this advertising here, get new clients. When I didn't even really fully understand that I had this kind of treasure trove of potential revenue within my current client base. And like you said, I, there was people giving discounts away that I didn't know about. So get that to end and all of a sudden your revenue increases without increasing any expenses. Get your clients into different packages that, that are probably a better fit for them and more revenue for you, which is drastically driving up revenue and all that without increasing any of my expenses. So that was huge. And then on the marketing side, just like you said, it, just knowing exactly what my return on that marketing is. It's one thing to look at it and say, okay, I spent 200000 in marketing and made $800,000. But when I'm working with you guys and you're breaking everything out, I can truly see this is what's derived from my marketing. This is why I should increase it or maybe why I shouldn't increase it by how much, et cetera. So just those KPIs just open your eyes to, to every little detail of your business. I thought we too, we did a pretty good job. Like you were getting, you were seeing, okay. How many people were raising their hands? How many people were booking calls? What your close rate was with your salesperson? Really cool to see that reverse engineer and get a early indicator of, or like a leading indicator of what you thought sales, future sales were going to be. Let's talk a little, just take a step back, right? What we preach is the, what, what is called the three wealth, right? So the first piece is that accounting analytical piece, dashboard piece. We've been talking about what we've, you know, been able to accomplish there. The second of the three wealth is the long-term tax strategy. We'll talk about that last. And then the third piece is the wealth, right? Building personal wealth, building business wealth. And with you being a real estate investor yourself, right? I think we were, we did that forward-looking positive cash flow analysis for you. And we we're able to show you, okay, this is how much your business, the coaching business is spilling off, right? In terms of profit. And you were you know, numb to the fact that I'm just taking anything I make, I'm putting it back into the business, right? And I don't know if willy-nilly is the right term, but we were just, just doing it. It's automatic, right? And by us showing you, okay, this is what we're projecting going forward as from a ca positive cash flow. This is like the cash going into the business, into the account. What did we want to reinvest in the business and what the return on your investment would be, right? Or comparatively to you've done single family, multifamily, commercial. So you have as a real estate investor, you know what your return is on that, right? Or at least has a pretty good, have a good, pretty good predictor. So it was cool to be able to, to show you, okay, if we took this much money off the table out of the business and put it into a separate fund to build a deposit for your next, you know, building, and we could compare and contrast the, the different return on that, the return on investments from both perspectives. And again, building both your, your business wealth, as well as your personal wealth. Let, let, let me know your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think uh, it was eye-opening to hear from you guys how having a business isn't just about continuously reinvesting in that business. Like I'm in business to make money and to give myself money and, and, and fund other businesses and create wealth. 
when I think I'd fallen down that rabbit hole of, okay, I make money and it stays in the business. And then I make more money and it stays in the business and I spend it in the business. And there's a time and a place for that, right? Like in, in growth phases, maybe you're spending more, but there's also a time and a place that you need to pull that money out and either use it for yourself to make your own life better or to put it into these other investments, like you said, to, to grow my wealth. And just being able to get a clear snapshot of, okay, every dollar that you invest in your business, you're generally returning this much versus if you went and put that into a new triplex, you would get this much. And being able to see that in real time and, and truly understanding that comparison. It was, yeah, it was also, dope. just to summarize, we, the three wealth, so the accounting, we, we got your accounting and we got your chart of accounts to be really digestible, right? So you understood a little more about the financials of your business. Then we took those and we really looked at what were the profit drivers, what's driving your business, right? We looked at your client count. We looked at ARAP, accounts receivable, accounts payable. What are you collecting? Who you're collecting? Discounts. And then we looked at really your expenses and we did a pretty deep dive there. Got that really cleaned up. And then we converted that information into a dashboard that allowed you to see everything on a very quick basis. And then through our monthly meetings, I was very impressed with you, right? Being able to go through that dashboard and you were coming up with ideas like one after another about how you can improve the business. Every month, we would spend maybe uh, 45 minutes to an hour looking at the dashboard, talking about your 90-day rocks, 30-day rocks, and how much you were, to, you, know, you were able to accelerate the business in the last year was very impressive. The next is the three wealth, is that wealth piece, and looking at that positive cash flow of the business and how you were diverting the funds and which way. And the most important, I think, piece of that is being intentional, right? That you're being intentional about what you're putting back into the business and what you're pulling off and building that reserve to, to buy that triplex. 